On December 6, 1964, a stop-motion Christmas special aired on NBC, where it would later become a staple during the holidays. That special was Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, produced by the company Videocraft International, which we now know today as Rankin Bass. Founded by Arthur Rankin Jr. and Jules Bass back in 1960, they had produced their own animated specials and movies, both traditionally and stop-motion with the Animagic Technique. Similar to animation companies like Hanna-Barbera and Filmation, Rankin Bass's animation was very limited due to his low budget. Looking at it today, its stop-motion animation looks very stilted compared to modern stop-motion movies and specials from Ardman Animation or Leica. But the specials have a unique charm to them that can never be replicated again, despite the many homages to its Christmas specials. From 1964 to 2001, Rankin Bass had produced a total of 19 holiday specials with varying degrees of quality. Some are considered iconic and air on TV constantly every year. Others have been forgotten to the point that most people wouldn't have known they existed unless they're bundled in a compilation DVD with well-known Christmas specials. In honor of the 55th anniversary of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, I'll be giving you my top five favorite and least favorite Rankin Bass Christmas specials. Now keep in mind, if there are any specials that aren't in my list, or if you think that the ranking should have been higher or lower, just remember that this is my personal opinion. With that out of the way, let's get started on my top five least favorites. Number five. The Leprechaun's Christmas Gold. The story is about a sailor named Diddy Doyle who's traveling home to Dublin in time for the Christmas holidays. The captain forgot to get a Christmas tree, so he sends Doyle to an uncharted island to retrieve a pine tree to take with them. After digging it up, he unleashes a wicked banshee who was banished for over a hundred years due to tricking a leprechaun family called the Killicalarnies into stealing their gold. The head of the family, Blarney Killicalarney, decides to leave them since they were tricked so easily on giving their gold away and protecting the gold from being stolen again. With the Banshee being free, she has less than 24 hours to try stealing the gold away right before she's reduced to a bubbly sea foam. The Leprechaun's Christmas Gold is one of the most obscure Rankin Bass Christmas specials and rarely gets aired on TV. Sadly, there's a reason why. The story and characters aren't the most interesting, especially when you compare it to the other specials. Seriously, I had completely forgotten about the plot and the character's name shortly after watching it. For some reason, the introduction of the Banshee reminds me of the introduction of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers with Rhea Repulsa rising up from her prison. But the biggest issue with this special is that it's horribly mislabeled. It would have been a better St. Patrick's Day special than a Christmas special. Now that's not to say that Rankin Bass can't make specials that mixes two holidays together, or not take place around Christmas. We've had Rudolph's Shiny New Year, Rudolph and Frosty's Christmas in July, and Jack Frost that took place after Christmas. Rankin Bass even did animated specials about Thanksgiving and Easter, with The Mouse of the Mayflower and The First Easter Rabbit, respectively. The Leprechaun's Christmas Goal doesn't deliver the Christmas spirit whatsoever. But that's not to say that this special is bad, because there's some really good things in it. Art Carney's performance as Blarney Killicalarney was great, and hands down the best character in the special. The stop motion was done really well, and some of the songs are pretty catchy. The golden gold of Ireland's only seen by leprechauns For we mine it in the middle of the night And we chop it into nuggets and we pile it into pots Which we bury for the early morning light Overall, the leprechaun's Christmas gold as a Christmas special should not exist Glory be, tis a miracle, a Christmas miracle Number four, Santa Baby. After 16 years of no new Rankin Bass Christmas specials, partially due to the company shutting down in 1987, Arthur Rankin Jr. produced one more Christmas special in the form of Santa Baby in 2001, based on the 1953 song of the same name, sung by Eartha Kitt. After watching it for the first time recently, I can understand why this was the last one. The plot focuses on a little girl named Dakota, wanting to spend more time with her father, Noel, However, he's too busy because he needs to write a new hit song for the music company. 
But one day, the partridge from the song 12 Days of Christmas, named Melody Songbird, approaches Dakota to give her a Christmas wish. Instead of wishing for toys, she wishes for her father to write a new hit song. So Melody tags along with Noel and helps him to come up with a new song by showing him life outside of his home and to give to others dressed up as Santa Claus. Meanwhile, the super named Mr. Sweet is enforcing new rules in the neighborhood and the apartment complex, such as no Christmas decorations and asking one of his residents named Mrs. Garcia to remove her animals from the basement that she cares for in a pet shelter. I want to give the positives of the special first. The traditional animation looks a lot better than the 2D animation from the older Rankin-Bass specials, due to most likely having a larger budget. I also like that the special takes place in a modern city like New York City, with a diverse cast of characters, mostly African Americans. Most Rankin-Bass specials took place in a small suburban town, small villages, or mythical places, so it was a very nice change of pace with the setting. I also have to give props to the stellar voice cast. You have famous celebrities such as Patti LaBelle, Eartha Kitt, Vanessa Williams, and so much more. Other than that, this special is a convoluted mess. First off, some of the side plots with the talking animals from the shelter wanting a new home or Mr. Swede acting mean with his strict rules and dislike of people are not very necessary to the overall story, especially the animals. Most of the Rankin-Bass specials are guilty of including animals as sidekicks for the main character or as the narrator of the story, such as Topper from Santa Claus is Coming to Town or B.A.H. Humbug from The Stingiest Man in Town. But at least they had a charm to them that made it enjoyable to watch. Not in Santa Baby, none of the animal characters have any charm or personality to them, and I wish that they had been cut off from the special. As for Mr. Sweet... He's one of the weakest antagonists in a Rankin-Bass special. He acts like a combination of the Burgermeister with his strict rules and Aaron with his hatred of people. We don't really get too much of a backstory on why Mr. Sweet is acting mean towards the people in the neighborhood, with the exception of a throwaway line from Dakota's mother. That Mr. Sweet is the meanest man ever. Well, he wasn't always that way. Remember how he used to help you kids build a snowman every year? He used to have real Christmas spirit, but then Mrs. Sweet was alive and he wasn't so lonely. You would think that Dakota would get the neighborhood together and give Mr. Sweet some Christmas cheer to make him smile, or Mr. Sweet getting a moment reflecting on what Christmas meant to him while his wife was still alive. But no, of course not. We get this surprisingly dark scene where he turns on the water pipes on the animal shelter to try to drown the animals so that they wouldn't return to the apartments. Messy furs, messy feathers. Mm-hmm. Here's a merry Christmas for you. Like, wow. Because the water froze over the following morning, the shelter would be shutting down and the animals are left outside in the cold. Mr. Sweet never gets into any trouble for destroying Mrs. Garcia's shelter, and no one even knew that he was the one who caused it. It tries to shoehorn in some good Christmas cheer with Noel rescuing the cat from the roof of the shelter and everyone getting together to repair it because of Christmas spirit. There's also this plot point with Noel dressing up as a street Santa so he can make extra money for his family. And that gives Melody the idea of having him collect clothes and deliver food for the poor and sliding on chimneys to not only give him the inspiration to write his new song, but to also be Santa Claus for Christmas Eve because the real Santa broke his leg. Just, what? Now you're the real Santa baby. Let's talk about the music. Most of the songs in this special are hip-hop versions of classic Christmas songs, such as Jingle Bells and Deck the Halls. And they range from okay to awful. I, I, I was dashing with my babies through the snow one day. In a kind of funky, freaky one-horse open sleigh. Through the streets, through the alleys, through the fields we go. Feeling very fine, we party all the way. The, the bells, bells on the churches and the bobtails ring. Making everything around a little too bright. But baby, what's funny is to ride and sing this. Jingle 
Now let's talk about Santa Baby. The original song was about a woman asking Santa to get her expensive stuff for Christmas, such as furs, yachts, and jewelry from Tiffany's, in a very seductive tone. Santa honey, a 54 convertible to light blue. I wait up for you, dear Santa baby, and hurry down the chimney tonight. Not a song I personally would have made into an animated special for kids, but hey, Rankin Bass has done great work with adapting classic Christmas songs into iconic Christmas specials, such as Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Santa Claus is Coming to Town, and The Little Drummer Boy, so I'm sure they'll find a creative way to adapt the song into a special. Santa baby, just slip a sable under the tree for me. Been an awful good girl, Santa baby, so hurry down the chimney tonight. No, of course not. It's really sad to see the last Rankin Bass Christmas special to go out not with a bang, but with a whimper. Number three, Pinocchio's Christmas. The story takes place around Christmas Eve where Pinocchio is experiencing the holidays for the very first time. He wants to get his father Geppetto a Christmas gift using the money he got from selling the gift he received from his father. But of course, he's led to the wrong direction by the fox and the cat, convincing him to bury his coins in the snow so that a money tree will grow, and he will use it to get Geppetto a better gift. After learning he was tricked, Pinocchio goes to the marionette showrunner Maestro Fire Eater to perform for him so that he can be able to make the money he lost. Pinocchio sees one of Fire Eater's puppets named Julietta performing on stage, and he wants to make her into a real girl. When learning that Fire Eater is going to change her into a wise men marionette, he runs away with her. Don't be frightened now. This is the Forest of Enchantment. You should feel safe among the trees, my little wooden friend. While I don't hate this special as much as I used to as a kid, I still don't think it's that great. The songs in the special are pretty forgettable. I can't recall on a single song from Pinocchio's Christmas, even shortly after I rewatched it for this video. I never know what gifts to buy, do you? On all my lists are things scratched out, me too. Let him ha, let him ho, let him roll, let him go, let him laugh, let him laugh, let him laugh. Here's the, the truth, truth, the, the whole, whole truth, truth, and nothing but. The characters are dull too. They're one-note versions of the characters from the classic Disney version of Pinocchio. Some of the characters were even done worse in this special, such as the fox and the cat and the talking cricket. Now here's an unpopular opinion. I don't hate Jiminy Cricket. I thought he was a helpful, optimistic character that Pinocchio needed to become a real boy. Without him, Pinocchio would have been stuck in Pleasure Island as a donkey. But the talking cricket in Pinocchio's Christmas was so lifeless and kind of mean. I know Pinocchio was too, but he was still learning what, what was right and what was wrong. Ow! Why did you do that? I... I don't know. Naughty, naughty boy. No, 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 you're a good boy. Also, I think that Pinocchio is way too naive in this special. How many times do we have to see him fall for every stupid trick for everyone he meets? What you've got to do is to go to the North Pole to see Santa Claus. This doesn't look like Santa's castle at the North Pole. Maybe that's because it isn't. <laughs> okay, now to be fair, I know he did this in the original film too, but at least we understood why he believed on their lies. They had so much charisma that the bad thing sounded like it was fun and the good thing sounded boring. We don't get that in this special. Interestingly enough, Pinocchio's Christmas debuted on TV in 1980, the same year that Disney's Pinocchio was celebrating its 50th anniversary. So essentially, Rankin Bass was simply trying to cash in on the good Pinocchio movie by releasing their own. That is shameful. Number two, Cricket on the Hearth. Based on the Charles Dickens Christmas short story of the same name, the story is about a cricket named Cricket Crockett, who resides in the home of a poor toy maker named Caleb and his daughter named Bertha. 
Bertha is betrothed to a Navy officer named Edward, going away to fulfill his duties. However, she receives the news that the Navy ship has sunk and that Edward had disappeared. Bertha was so heartbroken that she ends up going blind. As time goes on, the toy maker loses his home and business. So he asks a toy store owner named Tackleton if he could make toys for the children in exchange for food, shelter, and money. Tackleton agrees to give them a room to sleep in, but doesn't offer them any money because he's selfish and greedy. So Caleb ends up working for no money, receiving little food, and giving his daughter the bed to sleep in while he sleeps on the floor, never letting her know about their new miserable lives. Things start looking up when Caleb brings in a homeless man to take care of him, with Bertha having a close friendship with him. But then Tackleton starts falling in love with Bertha, asking Caleb for her hand in marriage. It's up to Cricket Crockett to stop the wedding and help make Caleb and Bertha's lives better during the Christmas season. This was the second Rankin-Bass Christmas special ever made, and it was the first one done in traditional animation, with a mixture of live action at the beginning of the special. Very similar to The Leprechaun's Christmas Gold, it rarely gets aired on TV, and it would later be overshadowed by its later contemporaries. Oh man, where do I start with this special? It's boring. Very, very boring. The characters are bland, the songs are extremely forgettable, the pace is agonizingly slow, the animation is cheap looking, even by rank and bass standards, and some of the plot points don't really add up. For example, why didn't Edward reveal to Bertha that he was the homeless man from the very beginning? Oh, because he wanted to test her to see if she still loved him? She became heartbroken to the point of going blind because she thought he was dead. Because of this test, he would have almost lost the chance to be with her again because Tackleton wanted to marry her. But because she was blind and had no idea that her and her father were treated horribly, as well as no idea what he looked like, of course she would have said yes to the proposal. Even Cricket Crockett pointed this stupid idea out. Uh, what I don't understand is uh, the whiskers and the wheeze. I came directly to her, but then I saw she'd gone blind. And I realized it was my fault. I couldn't just step back into her life after what I'd done to her. Oh, come on now. She needs you more than she needs six new eyes. That's what I hoped. But I had to be sure, you see. And so I adopted the disguise. This way I could be near her without anyone knowing. Blimey. Oh, there were a thousand times I was on the verge of telling her. But something always interrupted. And yesterday I made up my mind. You remember, I came in to tell her, only to see her radiant face. Radiant because the most wonderful man in the world had asked her to be his wife. Those were her very words. Oh, you, 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 you nincompoop! Paying any attention to the words of a gushing female. Oh, no. I could tell she meant it. And he has so much more to offer her. I'm still poor. And... Poor? Oh, why, she wouldn't trade the Bank of England for you. I wish I could believe that, Cricket. I came back tonight for one last look at her. I, I guess I just fell asleep watching her. Uh, you're asleep, all right. Asleep all over. Who oh, by you romantic, sentimental ninny. She don't love nobody else but you. If I could only believe that. If you've never seen or heard of the Rankin-Bass version of Christmas in the Hearth, you're not missing out. Do yourself a favor and read the original Christmas short instead. I feel as light as a lark, happy as a hummingbird. Why? Why? I wonder why. Maybe because it's Christmas. It really is Christmas. But of course. <laughs> of course. Merry Christmas. Nestor the Long-Eared Christmas Donkey. One year after releasing Rudolph's Shiny New Year, they decided to try catching lightning in a bottle twice with Nestor the Long-Eared Christmas Donkey. No, I'm not kidding. It's literally a rehash of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Let's run through a checklist, shall we? A weird animal with a weird deformity. Check. All of his animal friends make fun of him because of said deformity. Check. The parents covering the weird deformity to make him look normal. Check. He is destined to help the main deity of Christmas. Double check. Now take all of these elements and make it slower paced with incredibly forgettable songs. Don't laugh. 
laugh and make somebody cry. The main theme song being played constantly and is not even that good to begin with. Nestor was a donkey who seldom left to play Cause no one ever used him in the stable where he stayed Characters that are super cliched and surprisingly dark moments that come out out of nowhere The grass was cold and hard but better than the icy snow And Nestor's mama covered his entire body with her own <laughs> The love of Nestor's mother had saved him but in saving Nestor, she had allowed the storm to take her, and she was gone forever. Yeah, like that scene. Rankin Bass may be more known for their specials on Santa Claus, but they've done really good specials about the birth of Jesus Christ, such as The First Christmas and The Little Drummer Boy, books one and two. There's also Walt Disney's The Small One, produced and directed by Don Bluth that came out one year after Nestor. With its attempt of trying to make a Rudolph plot, but adding in the deformities of Happy from Rudolph's Shiny New Year, the death of Nestor's mother ripping right off of Dia's mother's death in The Man Who Laughs, and music so bland you forget what the song was seconds after listening to it, except for the main theme song, but it gets grating after a while. Nestor the long Year Christmas Donkey is definitely my least favorite Rankin-Bass Christmas special. Now all the world knows Nestor for his laughter and his ears. Merry Christmas! Now that I talked about what I thought were my top five least favorite rank and best specials, let's go over what are my five personal favorites. Same rules apply. Let's get started. <laughs> Number 5. Jack Frost Based on the mythical character from 19th century literature, this special begins with the celebration of Groundhog's Day, where we see our narrator, pardon me Pete, talking about how Jack Frost helped him get his shadows so that winter would last another six weeks. It started when Jack was delivering winter to a small town called January Junction, where the people were ruled by an evil Cossack king named Kubla Kraus. He falls in love with a girl named Elisa when she claimed that she loved Jack Frost. So Jack requests to Father Winter to turn him to a human so that he can be able to make Elisa his wife. He agrees and lets him become human until the first day of spring. For him to become human permanently, he must own a house, a horse, gold, and a wife. Jack's friends Snip the Snowflake Maker and Holly the Gypsy even become human to accompany him. They live with Alicia's family, pretending to be tailors, while Jack tries to get Alicia to fall in love with him. But things get even more complicated, with Alicia falling in love with a knight named Sir Ravenel, and Kubla Kraus falls in love with her as well. So he kidnaps her to make her his bride. Yeah, the plot is convoluted compared to most of the Rankin-Bass specials, the songs are simply okay, and the chemistry between Jack and Alicia isn't fully developed. When watching this special, you don't really feel that Elisa loves Jack romantically, but platonically. When Jack delivers the snow to January Junction, she's very thankful for what he did because she loves the winter season and the ice it brings so that the villagers could have ice money to pay for food, clothes, and bills. So it doesn't become a huge shock when Elisa marries Sir Ravenel in the end, especially when Jack disappears to return to his frost form to cause a six-week blizzard to prevent Kubla Kraus from destroying January Junction. But what makes this one one of my favorite specials is because it has so much heart in it. Jack is likable and charming, but he has a mischievous side to him when tricking Kubla Kraus's robot army to walk on the edge of the cliff so he can take his castle, gold, and horse for himself. This version of Jack Frost feels like the catalyst of other interpretations of Jack Frost in media, such as the one in Rise of the Guardians. I also like the other characters, such as Elisa and her family, Snip, Holly, and Kubla Kraus. The emotions portrayed in this special are genuine, and it makes you feel happy and sad without feeling forced, because you're so invested with the story and the characters. Jack Frost may not sit on top compared to its larger contemporaries, but its heart is in the right place. What was that? An old friend kissed the bride. Number four, 
Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. The special that not only kickstarted the remaining Christmas specials from Rankin Bass, but one that would become a staple in Christmas specials alongside with the Charlie Brown Christmas special and How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Anytime there's been parodies or homages to Christmas specials, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is the one that they reference the most. If I live to be a hundred, I'll never be able to forget that big snowstorm a couple of years ago. <laughs> if I live to be a trillion and two, I will never forget the year God of the 200 watt dog saved Nickmas. Well, actually, I am a dentist. A dentist? Well, I want to be someday. And despite his elfin size, Hermie had bigger dreams. I want to be a dentist. Based on the 1939 story by Robert L. May and the 1949 song sung by Gene Autry, the story is about a reindeer named Rudolph who is born with a shiny red nose. Everyone makes fun of him and don't include him amongst their group, except for a female reindeer named Clarice. One day he meets up with an elf named Hermie, who wishes to become a dentist, and Yukon Cornelius, who pursues in searching for gold and silver. Rudolph, Hermie, and Yukon run away and end up at the island of misfit toys, where unwanted toys reside, hoping that they'll find a child to love them. After Santa hears the news about the island of misfit toys, he decides to collect them and deliver it to the children. However, on Christmas Eve, a fog prevents Santa from riding his sleigh, and oh, you know what happens next. Rudolph. With your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? It will be an honor, sir. What can I say about this special? It's a classic. The characters, songs, and story are beyond memorable. Jingle, jingle, reindeer, through the frosty air they'll go. They are not just plain deer, they're the fastest deer I know. Ho, ho, you... <laughs> We're a couple of misfits, we're a couple of misfits. What's the matter with misfits? That's where we fit in. When Christmas Day is here, the most wonderful day of the year. Although the stop motion is a bit stilted in this special, they aren't without their own charm. It's a Christmas classic that will be a perennial favorite for years to come. Well, folks, as for the rest of the story... Number three, The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus. During the late 70s and early 80s, Rankin Bass went through a fantasy phase with their animated films. There was the 1977 adaptation of The Hobbit the 1980 adaptation of Return of the King, the 1982 adaptation of The Flight of the Dragons, and the 1982 adaptation of The Last Unicorn. So I suppose it's not too much of a surprise that the last Rankin Bass stop motion Christmas special released in 1985 would have a fantasy element to it. Based on the 1902 book by L. Frank Baum, the author of the Oz series, the story gives a different interpretation of the origins of Santa Claus. In the forest of Burzee, a mortal baby was found by the master woodsman of the world named Ak. He decides to let a lioness named Shiegor care for it until a wood nymph named Nasil decides to raise him as her own. They name the child Claus, and he grows up happy and safe. One day, when he's a young adult, Ak shows Claus the cruelty of mortal men, with people at war and children working at the fields. Claus wishes to bring happiness to the children, so he decides to leave Burzee and live in the valley of Ho-Ha-Ho, near a village where he would spend years making children happy. But then one cold evening, Claus finds a child frozen in the snow. He takes the child in, and he decides to make a toy based off of his kitten, Blinky. The rest of the children want to have toys of their own, so Claus makes it his life mission to make toys for the children so that they might find happiness. However, a group of evil beings called the Aguas try to prevent Claus from delivering toys so that they can keep making the kids unhappy and miserable. It's up to Ak and the rest of the Immortals to fight the Aguas so that Claus can continue to spread cheer to the children. For this being the last stop-motion Rankin Bass Christmas special, they went all out. The stop-motion animation is really, really well done. The characters are very endearing, especially their version of Santa Claus. And it also has a great balance of being cheerful, dark, and emotional. It's also one of two Christmas specials that has no celebrity narrator, the other one being Pinocchio's Christmas. Now before you post in the comments, I'm very aware of the 2000 version of The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus from Mike Young Productions, and 
It's pretty decent. You can't go wrong with either of them. If I were to choose between the two, I would choose the Rankin Bass version. Saint like Claus has no need to unlock doors if it pleases him to enter our home. Saint Claus? Santa Claus! Number two, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Based on the 1934 song sung by Eddie Cantor, this 1970 Christmas special also tells the origins of Santa Claus, but in a more traditional way. Similar to The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus, the story is about an orphan baby raised by a family of toy makers called the Kringles. They decide to call the baby Chris Kringle and teach him how to make toys. Chris hopes that one day he would take the toys to the nearest town to give to the people, as the Kringles did when they made toys for the king. As he grows up, he walks to the nearest town called Somber Town to give toys to the children who are sad and miserable. But their mayor, Burger Meister Meister Burger, yes, that's his name, bans all the toys due to them being injured from one. Chris continues to find inventive ways to deliver his toys, from visiting Somber Town at night while the Burgermeister is asleep, going down the chimneys after the door is being locked, and stuffing the toys in the stocking to hide from sight. Along the way, he meets up with some new friends such as the Penguin Topper, the Winter Warlock, and the school teacher Jessica. Despite the Burgermeister's attempt of trying to stop Chris from delivering toys to the children, Chris will stop at nothing to make them happy. You tell those young'uns there'll be plenty of toys, but only if they behave themselves. What makes this special a memorable one are the characters, songs, and story. The main characters such as Chris, the Burgermeister, Winter, Jessica, and the Kringles are all great. The songs are really catchy as well, and you remember them long after you watch the special. It's a difficult responsibility when you accept an appointment from His Majesty. When you tell what you wish for in a whisper, be prepared to pay. Put one foot in front of the other, and soon you'll be walking out the door. I even like the narrator in this special, the mailman voiced by Fred Astaire. He does a great job of telling the story and singing the main theme song. You better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. Another voice actor highlight is Mickey Rooney as Chris Kringle. He's so charismatic and lovable that it's no wonder he was casted as Santa Claus for three more Rankin Bass specials. His performance is the best in the entire special. That and Paul Freese as the Burgermeister. This is another Christmas staple that'll be around for years to come. And that's how it all started. Number one, The Year Without a Santa Claus. Based on the 1956 book written by Phyllis McGinley, the story is about Santa suffering from a severe cold. His doctor told him to cancel Christmas because all the work he does for delivering toys to the children doesn't mean anything to them anymore because they don't care about him. Santa decides to take the doctor's advice and stay home. Mrs. Claus decides to send two of Santa's elves named Jingle and Jangle to go around the world to see if there's any Christmas cheer left. They're attacked by the Miser Brothers and are forced to land in a town called Southtown. They see a group of kids in school and learn that Santa's assumptions were right. They don't care about him and felt that believing in him was for little kids. Meanwhile, Santa learned that Mrs. Claus sent Jingle and Jangle to Earth. He decides to go into town where they were last seen and bring them back. While in Southtown, he meets up with one of the kids from earlier named Iggy and is invited inside to care for his cold. When Iggy learns that people can still believe in Santa Claus despite their older age, he decides to help Jingle and Jangle free the reindeer Blitzen from the dog pound. The mayor, not taking Jingle and Jangle's story seriously, agrees to free Blitzen and give Santa an official day off if they can make it snow in Southtown for one Christmas day. So Jingle, Jangle, Iggy, and Mrs. Claus visit the Miser Brothers so that they can be able to get the task accomplished, and Santa starts learning about how the children appreciate him and will miss him around Christmas. This special has it all. A great story, unforgettable characters, catchy and memorable songs, and moments that'll make you feel cheerful and sad. Seeing Santa Claus tired and underappreciated after the many versions of the Rankin-Bass specials depict him as a jolly man wanting to make kids happy is a really nice change of pace. It makes Santa very relatable. 
Another reason why it's my favorite Rankin Bass special is because they have the best villains in all of their Christmas specials. Like, no question. The Miser Brothers are such iconic characters that they would get their own special in 2008, which was pretty decent. It's nowhere near as good as the original, but I recommend that you check it out. What I don't recommend that you check out is the remake. Seriously, stay away from the live action remake. Because if you ask me, Santa, you suck. But the final reason why I love this special is the message. For those who you believe are underappreciated, such as a family member, a teacher, a friend, or a significant other, you should give them thanks for all that they do. Even a simple gesture shows that you care, and that means more to them than you realize. By the big Borealis. By my maps and charts. I didn't know children had such kind hearts. To conclude, the true spirit of Christmas is something that we should never forget. In our cynical world filled with hatred and fear, we should all remember to be good and loving towards one another. No matter our race, gender, religion, or political choice, we should respect each other and help make the world a better place. No better time to do it than the holidays. And may it be shiny too! Smell